Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about physics. Uh, we're going to introduce some of the physics basics with Box2D, and we're also going to introduce a, um, a rendering debug rendering engine so you can actually see what the physics engine is doing. Um, and then we're going to attach uh, physics to the the logo that we've been messing with so far. So in Box2D, there's really four main components. There's the world, and the world has, um, it encapsula encapsulates the entire simulation. You add all of your objects into this world, and you generally only have one. Uh, you have bodies, and a body represents a single in-game object, and this is, it's a player, or a ship, or a vehicle, or anything that generally sort of is a cohesive unit. And then there's fixtures, and fixtures are what make up bodies. They're um, primitives. They're like polygons and chains and circles, and um, you add one or multiple fixtures to a body. And the fourth one is joints. Joints are constraints between fixtures, and the simplest joint is a weld, weld joint, and this you know, constrains two fixtures so that they don't move relative to each other, but there's also many other types of joints. So the first thing we need to do is instantiate a world, and because we're going to be using this world in a number of different places, we want to just create one here in our module. It's just a world object, and we say return world. Uh, it takes two arguments. It takes a gravity vector and the do sleep boolean. Gravity is just a force that's applied to everything all the time. If you were a making a space game, in which case there, in which there was no gravity, you would just say zero zero, and it, it won't apply anything naturally. But we're not a space game, so we're going to apply sort of regular Earth gravity. Uh, 9.81 meters per second per second down. Um, do sleep is uh, how inactive elements get treated. If an element has been, if a, if a body has been, hasn't been moving for a while, then it'll actually just stop processing that entirely until something bumps into it. And uh, I honestly don't really know why you'd ever specify false for that, but true seems to work well enough most of the time. Um, the last thing that I don't think you strictly need to do, but uh, I do anyway just as a safeguard, um, Box2D has an init method, and because Box2D is actually written in C and we're in a Java program, uh, it needs to load natives, uh, which is the, the C components that um, Java Box2D binds to. So if you look at the init method, you can see it's loading a, um, a shared library here. So that's it for our world. And however, if you try to render it right now, like nothing, there'll be nothing different. Um, nothing is using the world yet, and we and we haven't added added anything to the world. So the next thing we should do is actually add a physical object into this world. So the first thing we want to do is create this body that we were talking about. And you do that by saying world.createBody. So we don't have the world object in scope right here, so let's go ahead and bring that in. It's just world class. And then you can say create body, and it takes a body def. Um, because there's so many different parameters that get passed to body, and you can't, um, you want to, provide all these parameters up front. Uh, it create, there's a dedicated, this is basically an arguments object. And you can also reuse it if you want between multiple bodies. Um, so the main, there's a lot of different parameters that it um, can take, but the, the main one that we're most interested in is type. So there's three different types. Um, there's static, kinematic, and dynamic. Static means it's, it's completely static and doesn't really ever move. And I'm not even sure you can move it, but anyway, so no matter what 
how much force it is applied to it or how big of an object hits it, it never moves. Think of it as scenery. Um, kinematic body is a little more flexible in that uh, you can give it a velocity and you can set position and you can move it around and sort of script it to do a few things, but otherwise it's not really um, fully being uh, simulated by the engine. Dynamic body is the final one, and if you just want a, a ball, a beach ball to fall, or um, just things to behave completely naturally and just have gravity apply and bump into things, dynamic body is what we want. So we're going to go with that because we want just gravity to apply normally. Um, the next thing that we want is uh, we want to create some fixtures. And if you look at create fixture, you can either pass the fixture def, which is, again, something that has a bunch of arguments. Sort of, it's, it's exactly like body def. Um, or you can do the second one, which you pass in a shape and a density, and it sort of effectively generates a fixture def for you from that. And so for a shape, if you look at the shape um, uh, inheritance um, subclasses, there's circle, edge, chain, and polygon. What we really want is square or rectangle, but that, is, that doesn't exist, so there's, you know, polygon is the next closest thing. So let's create a polygon shape. And it doesn't take any arguments. However, you do need to sort of customize it a bit first. Um, and the easiest way to do that, if you look at, there's actually set, and you can actually pass in an array of, of coordinates. Uh, but we don't actually need that. They, they have a, a handy set as box method in which you provide the the half width and the half height. So we have the half width. We actually have both of those things. Hold on a second. Uh, so after shape is density. So let's just put 1.0 in there so that the red squigglies go away. Okay. So set as box. So we have the half width, and that's just image that width but width is in pixels, so we want to convert uh, pixels to pixels to meters. And then this is the full width, and we actually want the half width. And we want the same thing for height. And we're set. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that um, create body returns a body, and create fixture returns a fixture. But we're not actually uh, adding these anywhere. We're not saying world.addFixture or world.addBody because these methods implicitly do that. They, they create the body and they add it to the world. They create the fixture and they add it to the world. So um, that's it. Uh, so we have our, our box and it's in the game. However, you can't see it yet. There's, uh, you know, it, physics objects don't naturally have a visual component to them. However, Box2D does come with something that uh, is helpful to provide that visual component. And it's something that's generally useful for throughout the entire devel development life cycle, I've noticed. So we're going to call this Physics Debug System. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to need, but we definitely need to have a world object. And um, we're not iterating through entities for this, and therefore we don't need an iterating system. We really just need an entity system. So we want to override our one method, update. And there's a very useful class that box 2 provides called uh, Box2DRenderer. Sorry, Box2DDebugRenderer. And you can pass it no parameters, in which case it just renders everything. You can also pass it a secondary um, second function. There's a secondary overload in which uh, there's more configurability. But let's just leave it like this for now. So all we need to do is call renderer.render. And it takes a world and a projection matrix. So we have the world, but where does this projection matrix come from? So this is actually our camera. It needs to know where we're looking uh, in the viewport to actually figure out which what to draw. So if we pass in a camera here, now we have our camera. And you can just say 
camera.combined, which is our, you know, our, our favorite matrix. And the last thing we need to do is you actually use it. So I always put the debug stuff last so it renders on top of everything else, um, which I think makes sense because it's just for debugging. You want to make sure you can see it. So let's run. And we should see a box being rendered on the screen that represents our, our physics box. Okay, there we go. It's a single pixel wide, so it's a little bit hard to see, but there's a line going from here to here. So there's a couple problems here, and the first problem is this box is not lined up with our main image, so it's probably with the right size. You can't really tell because it's going off the screen, but it's not centered, and also it's not moving. So it's a box that has mass, and we're in a physics engine that has gravity enabled, so we expect it to move. And the reason why it's not moving is because we're not actually updating the, the physics engine anywhere, the, the world object. We need to tell it to, to go at some point. So let's do that right now. We just say class physics system, eject constructor, and again, we definitely need the world object. And again, we're not iterating over any entities here because we're just ticking the world. So we can just create an entity system. And then we call update. So this is actually where it gets a little bit complicated. There's a so there is a, a world method called step, but it takes time step and velocity iterations and position iterations. Time step is actually not the delta time. It's actually something that's a, a good bit smaller because the delta time is uh, too big and you'll you'll get weird physics clipping into each other artifacts. So I actually uh, found a blog post in which they talk about what some reasonable default settings are. And so that is here. I'm just going to copy it in. Um, if you go to this URL or this URL, both of which are in the description, there will be more information on uh, how this works and why these values are, are what they are. But for now, I'm just going to plop it in there. So as you can see, the time step is not uh, a sixtieth of a second. It's a three hundredth of a second. So it's you know a fifth of that. And there's multiple velocity iterations and position iterations. And th these are just really just magic numbers to make the physics engine um, go correctly. So now we want to add our physics engine. And we want to do this pretty early on. And if you hit run again, you'll see that it falls immediately off the screen, which is exactly what we want. So the next problem I think we should resolve is getting the uh, the physics box to actually line up over the texture that we want it to be to be bound to. So the first thing to do now is update the position of the body to be centered over the, the image. And we know what the we know where the, the image is. It's at 1 1. So the first uh, the most tempting thing to do is to say body.position.set and this seems perfectly reasonable. However, if you look at position, it's a getter, and all it does is copy, it makes a J and I call, then it copies that result into a position, into a, into a vector too, that is actually reused every time you, you call this, this body method, um, this body class. So by setting this, nothing actually happens. It doesn't, it doesn't work, uh, it doesn't modify the, the C representation of the class. So there's another slightly more verbose method that we want to use instead called set transform. 
And this lets you set the set two things. It lets you set the position and the angle. We don't actually care about the angle right now, but we have to set it. So for position, we want to use the transform component up here. And because we're inside of the apply block for an entity, we can just say this uh, transform dot position. And we don't actually need the this. And for the second argument, we provide the angle in radians or, or, or degrees, you know, it doesn't matter, it's zero. And so now if we try running again, you'll see it's a little bit further to the right, but it's still not centered on the image. And the reason for that is the box here, the position of the box is one, one, but that's relative to the origin of the box. And the box is, uh, the origin is at the center of the box. Whereas if you, you know, if you think about it, the one, one here for the image, the, it's actually being rendered from the lower left corner of the image. So the, the center of the box and the, and the corner of the image are perfectly lined up with each other, but that's not what we want. Um, you can try to fiddle with the center of the box to try to center it over the top of the image, but in my experience, it makes more sense to try to move the image instead so that the image is centered. So, so that instead of having the origin of the image being at the lower left corner, the origin is in the middle. Um, if you're using some of the more advanced uh, image classes that libgdx provides, like Sprite, you can actually, there's actually a method set origin, and that's actually well, what, it's for, what it's there for, and it defaults to the center of the image, which is, you know, pretty handy and exactly what we want right now. But so far, we're only using a texture. So let's go to our rendering system and fix this, fix this situation. So we want, we're rendering a position.x, which is 1, 1, and what we want to do is we want to offset that by the width and height of the by half the width and height of the image, so that um, just you know shift it over by half a width of whatever the position says it's supposed to be. So let's give ourselves a little bit of space here. And so for the position, we want to uh, for the for the, the x position, we want to subtract the half width which is just image dot width dot pixels to meters because because we're operating in in meters now because uh, because we're using our our world camera and we want to divide that by two because it's the, the half width that we're interested in and we do the same thing here image dot height dot pixels to meters and we try running. And what we're expecting to see is to have the image centered, but sort of more off the screen. Okay, so it looks like the physics object and the shape are, or the, the image, are lined up correctly. However, it's a little bit hard to see because it's um, off, off the edge of the screen. So we change the position of the transform to 5.5, five, and remember that the body uses that same position, so they should both move. And we'll see if they do. Okay, so it looks like they're starting out exactly in the, in the correct spot together. Um, however, as you can see, the image is not actually moving, but the debug system, the, the physics object is moving. So that's because the body has its own notion of a position and the, t and the, the entity has its own notion of a position. So that's, um, that needs to be remedied. And the way you do that is you create a physics synchronization system. And we'll see, it actually, it actually doesn't need any, uh, anything injected. So unlike the other systems we've built so far, this one actually uh, is an iterating system because we want to iterate over um, entities. We want to iterate over everything that has a texture component and has a body. 
So if we say family.get, sorry, family.all, we want um, everything with a transform component, because that's what we're copying to. And we don't actually have a, we don't actually have a physics component yet. Dot get, and we'll come back to this in a moment. So what you want to do is the, the goal of this is every tick to look at the body position and copy it onto the transform position. Uh, however, if you look here, like we create the body and we attach it to the world and everything, but then it goes out of scope. As far as our actual application is concerned, it's it's gone. Uh, so what we need to do is hold on to it, and we do that by creating a new component, physics component, and we attach it to the entity, and it just accepts the body as an argument. So we have this physics component, and we want to go over to our components file, and we want basically the same thing as texture component, but for this body. Oh, sorry, physics component. Body component would also work. We're going to create another uh, extension helper method called physics. And we don't want a texture, of course, we want a body. Okay, so there's no errors. And if we go back over here, you can see a physics component is now working. Um, and the next step is to provide a process entity method. So remember the purpose of this is to copy from the position of the physics, physics component to the position of the transform. And you really just need to say entity.transform.position.set and entity.physics.body.position. So this is, remember that this is okay because we fully control this transform, this uh, position vector. Um, it's not, we're not, this doesn't return a copy, this returns the actual vector. Whereas when you call um, position on the body object, it does return a copy because the real one is in C somewhere. We don't have direct access to it. So now we want to actually use the physics synchronization system. And we'll put it here immediately after the physics system to ensure that the render si rendering system that comes immediately after will actually see a consistent view of the world. So now when we hit run, we should see our image falling. And so we do. So that's the basics of our physics engine and the, the very basics. And so next time we're gonna add a few more things to, to spice things up a little bit. Um, we're just gonna add a platform underneath the bottom so that it stops falling off the screen. And then we can start thinking about uh, adding controllers so you can actually, so the player can actually interact with the object instead of just watching it play out whatever, whatever it does.